So if you have something that needs to insert into something else, but a friction fit seems to be the only option, what is something you can design so that you don't really have to deal with the variation in material expansion that can screw up that tolerance? That's what we're going to talk about here. Hey everybody, so a lot of us have probably designed parts where you have a pin and a hole going together, where you want to be able to press something into something else and have it fit just perfectly. You don't want any wobble, but or maybe you want it to grasp it a little bit. All kinds of tweaks and tolerances. This is generally called a friction fit, which is generally a tolerance, tolerance of a couple thousandths of an inch when used in like machining or molding. But with FDM 3D printing, you have a number of challenges that kind of prevent or slow this down. First of all, if you're doing a 3D printed part going into another 3D printed part, you have the layer lines which act like Velcro. They lock together and bounce over each other. If you have a smooth part going into a 3D printed part, it works, but then you have to deal with material expansion or maybe tuning of the machine even or slightly different flow rates between machines. The ambient temperature of the environment that changes material expansion or the rotation of the earth. There's a lot of things that hurt that amount of subtlety without having to go down to like a 0.1 millimeter nozzle and super slow speeds and exceptionally expensive material. But there is a way to design a part that will always fit and always grasp the thing that you're trying to insert into it without having to deal with all that exceptionally high tolerance. And this is the solution that we came up with. These are called grip fins. Grip fins are a mechanical feature inside of a print where you design these small flexible pins in line with the layers. So if you have the layers coming up along here, you design the fins so that they rotate in that direction so that they're in the plane of the part. So they're as strong as can be and can flex for forever as long as the material doesn't fatigue. But grip fins allow you to have just that little amount of flexibility and tolerance so that you can always insert something because they will spread regardless of the tolerance to catch whatever is there. And then they will also still grip it. They'll actually have a spring action on it. So this is an exceptionally good solution for it. The way to design it though is a little bit tricky. There's a few subtleties of good ways of doing this. Obviously, yes, you can take the fins all the way up. This is not manufacturable with any other method because in the back of the hole, you actually need to crop off the fins so that they're fully independent. So right here, fins are cut off on the top so they can move freely up there, but they can also move freely in the back so that you have a full and complete separated fin. A lot of people would accidentally make the fins connect with the upper part of the hole so that they just lock up there so you have flexibility down here at the entrance, but not all the way in there so that it just gets tighter and tighter and then they don't do anything. So you want the fins to be fully free the whole way. This part was printed on the build plate like this. It was actually used for this piece. This is a piece of agricultural equipment that needed to mount onto a motor spindle. So we used uh, grip fins on that to allow that to work out. Since it was on the print bed, it creates a problem with the first layer because you don't want to have to lay down those uh, motion pads on the very first layer because you have a high likelihood of them delaminating from the bed or warping up. So what you do is you chamfer the top of each one of these fins so that they are able to be lifted up off of the bed and aren't really part of that first profile. What happens is you go ahead, chamfer them up, and then you basically have a perfect circle there at the start of the hole, and then the fins are grown up step by step as they go upwards. This also gives you a little bit of a funnel, so whatever you're pressing into there is able to press into the fins and not getting cockeyed or kinked or anything along those lines. So this is a way to design grip fins or grip fins. If you have them further up and apart, uh, what you can do is again, use chamfers, basically make a trapezoidal fin. That way you can have it anywhere inside of a part, regardless of if there's support underneath it. And you certainly don't wanna have to support these fine features. In order to increase the flexibility so that they grip a little bit more softly, you can either make them thinner or make them longer. That's two ways of getting that done. The longer means that you could potentially have a lot of slop or kinking of whatever's in the hole, but shorter or thinner means that you have higher potential for fatigue. So it can't be a high cycle part where you're going to load it up and insert a ton of time. So that's kind of the design component of it. There's not too much else with the fins. They work very well with uh, pet G ABS kind of industrial materials. PLA, they do work fine and can work fine, but you have much less flexibility and you have much more brittleness. So it's not the greatest for that type of a design, but they're a great way to compensate for the tolerance of FDM, which is generally around uh, a hundredth of an inch or so, or five thousandths of an inch. So this allows you to have a part that is securely inserted into a hole, is held rigidly and firmly, but is still potentially removable and is still 
consistent and very mass producible. This is an excellent feature for mass production because it doesn't require a caliper check on each part and the potential rejection of parts being out of tolerance due to the variation in material and temperature and all this kind of stuff that can come in with mass production with a 3D print farm. So hopefully this is a nifty little design that can be useful to you. Let us know what you think and if there's other kinds of designs or problems with uh, printed parts that you'd like us to talk about and show you some solutions. Have a great day everybody.